Yo guys, sorry I look like a mess, but today I'm actually, uh, uh, what am I doing? Oh, Walmart in my new TV. So I've got this 50 inch TU7100 uh, Samsung on uh, Black Friday. So here it is. And I'm going to be Walmarting it there. Is a 50 inch and it's gonna look pretty massive but it fits so why not Okay guys, now here I have the TV finally up in my bedroom. So this is a 50 inch TU7100 from Samsung, okay? If you found this video useful, please drop a like and subscribe down in the channel. It really helps me out. And if you wanna to skip to anything, then look at the timestamps. It'll jump you straight through to the section that you want to know about, okay? So yeah, this is a 50 inch version, which, uh, you know, depending on what kind of room you've got, um, makes it ideal for like a, a bedroom TV or a living room TV, whatever you want to go. They go all the way up to, I think it's 65 inch or it could be 75 inch. I'm not 100%, but this is the 50 inch version. Really nice TV. Um, now this is the cheapest one in the Samsung range. So let's move on to the hot topic. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the design. So the design of the TU7100 is quite similar to what all the other Samsung TVs are actually uh, designed like. So as you can see from the edges here, you've got that kind of carbon metallic uh, effect. It's not real metal, but it's like a plastic kind of uh, imitation kind of metal, like a brushed aluminium kind of effect. Looks really smart on the on the wall. The uh, the screen goes right up to the edges as well. There's hardly any bezel on this thing, and you've only a bit of logo you've got there. There's a Samsung logo right in the middle there, which also houses your buttons to um, you know uh, turn the TV on or whatever if you lose the remote. On the back of the TV, there's just a black plastic kind of matte finish that you get with either Samsung TVs and it doesn't protrude out too much from the wall. This is on quite a slim profile wall mount so it doesn't um, stick out that much as well and you can only tilt it forward and back uh, but you can obviously use any VESA wall mount with this thing and it'll do the job. Now, as you can see from the TV now, at the moment I've got none of the lights in my bedroom on. I've got really big skylight windows over here on my bedroom. As you can see, there's six huge windows so um, and it's shining a lot of light in the daytime straight onto this panel which obviously can be annoying so that's where good reflection handling will matter quite a lot now this is the cheap end of the uh, Samsung uh, TVs so it's not going to have the most amazing uh, um, uh, reflection handling in the world so as you can see at the moment um, you've got the TV here um, when it's just on uh, its uh, default brightness settings I think I've turned it up like up to about uh, I think about 30, 35, something like that, because normally most of the time I'm watching it, it's at night when I put the lights down, so I don't want to hurt my eyes and stuff, and the reflections isn't too bad anyway. But yeah, that's what it's like there. Now I have got some lights here, which you can't really see on the camera, uh, but if I turn my lights on, you can see that now you can get in that um, reflection from the lights glaring onto the panel there. So that. So that's something to bear in mind. If you've got some lights in the room that are in direct uh, line of sight of the TV, then you are gonna get that kind of glare from those lights or those windows, something like that. If I turn the lights off and turn the TV off, you can then see um, the current reflections in the room. So I don't know if it's being picked up on camera or not, but you know, from this angle, there's a lot of uh, reflections. It's almost like a mirror, to be honest. The reflection handling is very poor, um, but then when I turn the lights back on, you can see right there, straight away, it's like a mirror. You can see the lights there. So if you have got um, uh, windows uh, that are shining onto the TV, or you've got lights that are right in front of the TV, it might be something to bear in mind. Now, another thing that alleviates the, uh, the, the reflection glare on the TV, on the panel, will be something like brightness settings, okay? Now, the brighter your TV is, the less of an issue reflections turn out to be because the brightness overpowers the reflections. Now, this TV, obviously, is a cheaper end of the scale. It doesn't go the most bright, uh, brightest panel in the world. So if I just turn it back on now. So I've gone to the settings menu here, and this is the brightness at full 50%, uh, the full, well, full uh, 50 uh, by a backlight. So that's as bright as the TV's gonna get. So you're not gonna get any better um, than that when it comes to the reflection. And if I turn the lights off, that glare goes away and that's the kind of performance that you led with. 
Now, one thing to bear in mind is the TV actually itself has got ambient light detection. So basically what that means is um, if the room is quite dim or dark, the TV will automatically adjust the brightness to compensate what's going on in the room. So if it's a really uh, dark room, it'll turn the brightness down to uh, reduce eye strain. If the brightness goes up in the room, like you open a curtain or something like that, then the brightness will crank itself up to uh, compensate for that um, additional ambient glare. But that's something that you can disable in the menus if you don't like it. I personally, I think it's a bit rubbish because I found that sometimes it'll make it way too dim when the scene goes really dim as well uh, and, you, and you got your lights down, then it's kind of more of a pain to be honest because you can hardly see anything on the screen. So I just leave the brightness at, at maximum and it doesn't really bother me. Okay, now let's talk about the remote. Now the remote is your pretty much standard uh, Samsung uh, uh, smart TV fare that you'd get with pretty much any Samsung. So you might be already familiar with it. Um, notable differences on this particular one with the 2020, 2021 model is you've got the Netflix, Prime, uh, Amazon Prime Video and the Rakuten shortcut buttons which takes you straight to the apps if they're already installed on your TV. Um, so the button itself, uh, the buttons itself, they are quite spongy, you know, what you kind of get with the cheaper ones. Downstairs I've got the Q90R and the TV uh, remote on that is metallic and it's a lot more nicer quality, but you know, with this one, it's just your cheap average Joe uh, kind of remote. Now I have tried seeing if I can sync up the remote, uh, the more expensive uh, Samsung One remote. It doesn't actually work on this TV, unfortunately, because I don't think it's got the uh, capabilities built, built in for it to detect the TV. So it's not actually compatible with it. So if you do want the better remote, you can't get it, you have to stick with this one. So that's something to bear in mind. Okay, now the menu system on it is very familiar to the current uh, Samsung line. However, the style of it is quite different from the uh, QLED series um, where the uh, the menus and tiles look a bit different. So on, the, uh, on this set, you've got the uh, tiles at the bottom, very similar layout. However, the tiles are a bit smaller, they're more of a square instead of a landscape. Um, and uh, they have this kind of dark blue background as well on the menu itself. Now, being the cheaper end of the Samsung TV scale, the actual speed of the uh, menus isn't that quick. It takes a bit time for it to load up, especially after you just turn the TV on. You might have to wait a few uh, seconds, like maybe about 15 to 10, uh, you know, 20 seconds for it to actually figure out what it's doing in its life before it realizes that it's a TV and then you can actually start moving the um, uh, across the menus. Now, uh, once it gets going, it is actually uh, quite quick and responsive. Not as quick as the QLED range because that's got the better processor in it, but it's just something to bear in mind. App-wise, you've got everything you need from the Samsung uh, App Store. You know, all, all the kind of ones that you'd be interested in. Netflix, Disney, Prime Video, Now TV, Apple, it's all kind of there, Spotify, etc. Uh, so all your big names are there as well. And it's also got Steam Link capabilities. So if you've got a gaming PC, you can stream the PC game straight to the TV without leading the Steam Link or anything like that. Moving on to black uniformity now, uh, being an edge lit panel, it's not uh, you know it's not a fouled panel. Um, your your, uh, your black uniformity isn't going to be like that kind of levels or OLED levels or anything like that. But again, this is a cheap budget TV. You're not going to get that kind of levels of black. But um, looking at it here, when you do have a bit of lights in the background uh, of your room and you're not watching it in pitch black, then the black uniformity actually works out quite well. You're not going to notice any um, visible glaring as you can see from here. Now the, the panel itself does obviously dim itself when it doesn't detect a lot of uh, brightness in the actual scene itself. So I don't know if you saw it then, but the actual... Um, uh, brightness of the center cross uh, went down, but um, obviously it's very limited on, on how much uh, dimming capabilities it's actually got. Um, now, if I turn off the uh, lights or dim my uh, um, blinds here, we can get a better closer look at this. So as you can see, you are kind of getting that bit of clouding there, you know, around these big large spots um, when the room is really dark, but that's just something to expect with something like that. Okay, now here we have a local dimming test here. Now, obviously the TV itself is an edge lit panel. So as you can uh, imagine, there is pretty much absolutely zero local dimming going involved. You are gonna get that consistent, um, like a dark gray kind of background in your blacks. Um, in really dark scenes, it's more obviously more noticeable. But that's just something to bear in mind, you know, buying an edge lit display, what it's going to look like. Moving on to colour accuracy, Samsung's Crystal UHD is what they're calling this particular range, which obviously is a step down from their QLED series. The colour accuracy actually is, looks really nice. In very brightly lit scenes, this is where this particular TV performs spectacularly well. The colours look really nice and vibrant. Samsung tends to uh, favour a higher contrast on their TVs to give it that extra pop. 
um, in the scene. So colourful scenes like this, stuff like Disney films, you know, where you've got animated content will look really, really sharp and nice. The 4K quality is crystal clear. It looks really good. Even when you go really close up to it like I am from here, it'll look really sharp and great. Um, however, where it does kind of suffer is in really dark scenes where, you know, you've got um, some kind of background where it's really dark, you know, got dim lighting. I'll put an example up on here so you can have a look. Um, that's where the kind of Samsung, uh, the 7100 kind of struggles a bit. Um, as you can see, it's kind of figure out, you know, which part of the scenes should be brighter and which bit should be darker. And that's where you kind of get a bit of contrast issues. Um, but for really bright scenes, this is where the Samsung really excels. Moving on to gaming performance, now the Samsung TU7100 obviously is a basic set, it doesn't have anything like VRR, um, you know, variable refresh rate, it doesn't have any, obviously anything like G-Sync or FreeSync or anything like that built into this panel, it's just your straight up kind of, um, you know, 60 uh, hz panel when you are using it on, on a PC or something like that, or using it with your uh, PlayStation or Xbox. Now the colours obviously look really great, especially in a game like this which is Overwatch. Now if you want speed or anything like that, obviously bear in mind most of these people are going to be using a console with this. So that's where your 60 hz will be, you know, be fine for that. Where obviously the new PlayStation 5, the new Xbox uh, Series X, obviously they can go a bit higher than that in certain scenarios. Um, but then if you want to run at 4K, it's not always going to give you that high refresh rate as well. So it kind of depends on which more is more important to you. Um, the colours look really great. Again, like I mentioned previously, in dark scenes, not so much the, uh, the the best competitor. So if you're playing like a more darker games, like maybe a horror game or something like that, then obviously that's where it wouldn't really shine so great. But in terms of like, you know, you straight up kind of uh, shooters like this, uh, where it's really colourful, it does look pretty good. Um, now obviously, like I mentioned before, it has got Steam Link built in as well. So if you've got um, a gaming PC and you want to stream your Steam library of games to it, just use your pad, you can just straight uh, play your Steam Link as well with that Steam Link app on the Samsung Store. All right, now moving on to HDR performance. Now the Samsung are notorious for this. They don't actually support Dolby Vision, but they do support HDR10+, Plus, which is only ever supported on Samsung or I think Panasonic displays and I think possibly Hisense, something like that, but there is another manufacturer that does it. Now, obviously that means is any Dolby Vision content would be displayed at HDR10 and not HDR10+. So your apps like uh, Rakuten TV, Amazon Prime, you'll be able to get your HDR10 plus content on that, and obviously any Blu-rays that support it, you'll have it on that. But Dolby Vision is only really supported on Netflix, um, and Disney Plus, um, when you're watching uh, programs on there, then you'll be uh, you watching it at HDR10 instead of uh, HDR10 Plus or Dolby Vision. So that's just something to bear in mind. However, on a set like this, the brightness doesn't quite go high enough anyway to kind of take advantage of those extra HDR10 Plus or Dolby Vision kind of uh, qualities when you actually watch it you'll very struggle to see a difference between that and standard HDR, HLG or HDR10, which kind of just look the kind of norm in that kind of scenario anyway. Uh, this kind of budget, I wouldn't worry about HDR performance too much. It still looks really good. Okay, now that wraps up the review of the Samsung TU7100. Tell me what you think of the TV in the comments below. Um, are you thinking of buying one? And I hope this review has helped you out if you are. And uh, again, it is a cheaper set. So if you want a really good cheap TV that you just want in your bedroom or maybe for your kids room or something like that, or even in the dining room where it's not your primary driver, I would recommend it. Obviously, this kind of price, I think I picked it up for £350 for a 50 inch version, so it is quite a good uh, TV, obviously, for that kind of money. And you are getting that Samsung reliability as well. And obviously, depending on where you buy it for, the link's in the description, um, but uh, you can get it with a five year warranty as well, depending on who you buy it for. So that's something to bear in mind as well. Um, but I hope this video has helped you out. Please drop a like and subscribe and a comment down below if it's helped you out. And thanks for watching.